This hurricane season will be very different. From conflicting signals to record-breaking temperatures, all the elements are aligning for a stormy roller coaster ride. In this video, we dive deep into the data and uncover the shocking truth about what lies ahead. Get ready to witness the unparalleled power of Mother Nature as we navigate through this unpredictable journey. Stay tuned as we unravel the mysteries and provide you with the insights you need to stay safe and prepared. First, let's focus on the update. After a hurricane season in the Atlantic that was near normal in 2022, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, or NOAA, forecasts another hurricane season in the Atlantic that will be near normal. The NOAA forecast a total of 12 to 17 named storms for the year 2023. There is a possibility that five to nine of those could develop into hurricanes, with one to four of those developing into major hurricanes. The Saffir Simpson Hurricane Wind Scale is the tool that is used to classify major hurricanes. The only factor that is taken into consideration by this scale is wind speed. It does not take into account rainfall, storm surges, or tornadoes. A hurricane is considered to be a major hurricane if it is a Category 3, 4, or 5 storm with winds of 111 to 157 miles per hour or higher. A hurricane with a Category 3 or higher rating has the potential to cause catastrophic damage to property and power outages, which can force people to evacuate their homes for several days to several months. According to the NOAA, there is a 40% chance that the 2023 hurricane season will be about average, a 30% chance that the season will be above normal, and a 30% chance that the season will be below normal. It's likely that this year will be less active when compared to the previous few years due to competing factors that either suppress or fuel the development of storms. According to the definition provided by the NOAA, the hurricane season begins on June 1st and ends on November 30th. However, hurricanes can start earlier and continue for longer than expected. The Colorado State University has forecast a hurricane season that will be slightly below average. According to projections made by CSU, the 2023 Atlantic hurricane season will be near average with 15 named storms and major hurricanes making landfall. The team from the university predicted a total of seven hurricanes, of which they anticipate that three will develop into major hurricanes. The CSU team revised their initial forecast from April 13, 2023, which predicted a slightly below average Atlantic hurricane season with 13 13 named storms and two major hurricanes. They made this adjustment in light of new information. The predictions of the CSU Hurricane Center are based on four models, each of which uses anywhere from 25 to 40 years of historical data and considers conditions such as the following. El Nino is a primary factor that the CSU team considers when making its forecast for a hurricane season in the Atlantic that is expected to be close to average in 2023. It is possible for El Nino to bring about an increase in upper level winds across the Caribbean and into the tropical Atlantic, which can disrupt the formation of hurricanes. However, the research team from CSU claims that there are contradictory signals between an unusually warm tropical and subtropical Atlantic and the development of a potentially powerful El Nino. The team emphasizes that this year's prediction comes with a greater degree of uncertainty than is typical. According to CSU's analysis of storms from 1991 to 2020, the activity level of the hurricane season in 2023 will be approximately equal to that of an average season. The hurricane season of the previous year saw approximately 75% of the average number of storms. According to Phil Klotzbach, a research scientist in the Department of Atmospheric Science and the lead author of the report, the hurricane season of this year is displaying characteristics that are comparable to those of the hurricane seasons of 1951, 1957, 1969, 2004, and 2006. How accurate are predictions made regarding the hurricane season? We compared initial forecasts provided by the NOAA and CSU to the actual storms and hurricanes that occurred by the end of the year in order to determine how accurately they predicted the upcoming hurricane season. The NOAA has historically provided more accurate predictions, but they provide a range of possible outcomes rather than a single number like CSU does. It is possible that more than 33 million homes will be in danger during the hurricane season of 2023. According to a report by CoreLogic, which is a company that provides data and analytics for insurance companies, real estate professionals, and financial institutions, more than 32 million single-family homes and 1 million multifamily residences are at a moderate or greater risk of sustaining damage from hurricane-force winds. This risk applies to both single-family homes and multifamily residences. Almost 8 million of these residences have 
of either direct or indirect exposure to the coast, making them vulnerable to flooding caused by storm surges. Now, let's discuss El Nino. El Nino is a climate pattern characterized by the warming of waters in the equatorial Pacific Ocean. It has significant effects on weather patterns around the globe, including the formation of hurricanes in the Atlantic Ocean. One of the key impacts of El Nino on hurricane formation is the creation of wind shear in the Atlantic. Wind shear refers to the change in wind speed and direction with height in the atmosphere. In the presence of wind shear, the conditions necessary for the development and intensification of hurricanes become unfavorable. When the jet stream, a fast-moving ribbon of air in the upper atmosphere, dips down into the Atlantic as a result of El Nino, it brings with it strong winds aloft and cold air. This combination of strong winds and temperature contrast creates an environment of high wind shear. Wind shear disrupts the structure of developing hurricanes by interfering with the vertical organization of their circulation. It can tear apart the storm's core and hinder the formation of characteristic spiral bands and eye wall. Essentially, wind shear acts as a natural barrier to hurricane intensification. The presence of wind shear induced by El Nino in the Atlantic tends to suppress hurricane activity, making it more difficult for storms to form and strengthen. This is why El Nino episodes are often associated with quieter hurricane seasons in the Atlantic Basin. Understanding the relationship between El Nino and wind shear is crucial for meteorologists and forecasters in predicting hurricane activity. By monitoring the behavior of El Nino and its impact on wind patterns, scientists can gain valuable insights into the potential strength and frequency of hurricanes during a given season. The Atlantic Ocean is currently experiencing anomalously high sea surface temperatures which could have significant implications for the upcoming hurricane season. These warmer than usual ocean temperatures indicate the potential for more frequent and stronger storms. Warmer sea surface temperatures serve as a critical fuel source for hurricanes. They provide the necessary energy for the formation and intensification of these tropical systems. The warmer the water, the greater the amount of heat and moisture available for storm development. These conditions create an environment that is conducive of the degeneration of powerful thunderstorms and the sustenance of hurricane activity. When sea surface temperatures in the Atlantic are significantly above average, it raises concerns for increased hurricane activity. The excess heat and moisture contribute to the instability and convective processes that are vital for the formation of tropical storms and hurricanes. The combination of warmer waters, conducive atmospheric conditions, and reduced wind shear could provide a favorable environment for storm development and intensification. The increased availability of warm, dense energy and the absence of inhibiting factors can potentially result in more frequent and stronger hurricanes. It is important to note that while anomalously high sea surface temperatures suggest a heightened risk, it does not guarantee the occurrence of extreme storms. Other factors such as atmospheric dynamics and wind patterns also play a significant role in determining the overall hurricane activity in a given season. Nevertheless, the elevated sea surface temperatures in the Atlantic serve as a reminder of the need of preparedness and vigilance during hurricane season. It is crucial for individuals, communities, and relevant authorities to remain proactive, stay informed about weather updates, and adhere to any evacuation orders or safety guidelines issued. According to the forecast, the upcoming hurricane season is anticipated to produce a range of 12 to 17 named storms. Out of these named storms, approximately 5 to 9 are expected to intensify into hurricanes, with 1 to 4 of them reaching the status of major hurricanes. The number of named storms refers to tropical storms that reach a certain threshold of sustained wind speeds. These storms receive names as a means of identification and tracking. Among those named storms, a subset is projected to undergo further intensification, developing into hurricanes with stronger winds and more significant impact potential. Major hurricanes are defined as those reaching Category 3 or higher on the Saphir-Simpson hurricane wind scale with sustained winds of 111 miles per hour or greater. While these specific numbers can vary, this range provides a general estimate based on current data and meteorological patterns. It is important to note that these predictions are subject to change as the season progresses and new information becomes available. These forecasted numbers underscore the need for preparedness and proactive measures to mitigate potential risks. Even if the forecast indicates a lower number of storms compared to previous seasons, it only takes one significant hurricane to cause widespread damage and disruption. Therefore, it is crucial for individuals, communities, and emergency management agencies to remain vigilant, stay informed about weather updates, and have appropriate plans and resources in place to protect lives and property. 
By remaining vigilant and prepared, individuals can mitigate the potential impact of a hurricane and ensure the safety of themselves and their communities. Even in seasons with decreased activity, the risk of a significant storm should never be taken lightly. It is better to be ready and not need to take action than to be caught off guard and face the consequences. And if you want to watch more videos like this, then please hit the subscribe button now.